It's so good to be with you and to tell you a story today. Yes, it is. Hey, boys and girls, how are you today? This is Uncle Brian. Stories worth repeating. I'm so glad you've joined Otong and me today for this story. It is a classic story. And it's one that has been told for years and years. In fact, it's written by someone who's unknown. So that means it may have different versions, but the one that Uncle Brian has heard is a really cool story, and I can't wait to tell it to you and to Otong because it's a neat story. So are you ready? You ready today? Okay, so Otong, you sit right here because you might be needed here, and actually I'm gonna give you some, well, I'll give it to you a little bit later. Okay, so this story is about a very, very wealthy man and his son. And this man, he and his son, they would collect pictures. In fact, they had collected some of the most amazing pictures from around the world. The famous pictures from Europe, he collected some called from Raphael, from Picasso, from Rembrandt. And um, you can ask your parents, boys and girls, seriously amazing paintings. And so he had a huge house with all these long corridors and hallways and amazing rooms where he could actually dedicate a particular room to a, a type of painting, like Impressionist painting or during the, the Middle Ages. Do you remember Raphael and Rembrandt and even some uh, you know, Picasso? Sometimes they would have other famous paintings that would be with them. And so he had collected all these through the years and his house was like going into a museum. In fact, many people would come from far and wide to see his art from around the world. Well, he had one son who he loved with all of his heart. And his son, at one point, it came time for him to go off to war. There was a horrible war in the story that I read. It was the Vietnam War, Vietnam right over here, and, and it was... A battle here. I don't know if the camera is showing this or not, or if you can see my finger, but okay. Uh, the Vietnam War, right on this part of the world. And so he had boys uh, from many different places coming, and so he went to serve in the Vietnam War, which was a very sad time. Many people died. And in fact, one day, the man got a telegram, a message from the department of the military, and they came to his house with the message to say, we are so sorry, sir, but your son has died in battle. And the man was just crushed and horrified, and, and he wept for a long time, and he was sad and depressed. Well, eventually, the war began to slow down, and some boys came back, some men came back from fighting the war, and one day there was a knock at his door, Otong, Someone came to his house. And the man came. Of course, he has a butler. He has a gardener. He has all sorts of servants helping him, taking care of his house, keeping it all nice. But the man came to the door and answered the door. And there before him was a young man. And the young man was kind of, kind of squeamish and didn't know what to do. I mean, if you're not used to being with rich people, you don't sometimes know how to stand. And so he's kind of wondering here and there. And he had something. He had something behind his back. And, uh, and he, he, he said, Sir, uh, my name is, and he gave his name, whatever that was. He says, I just came to tell you that your son saved my life. I was there the day that he died. He was rescuing me. I had gotten shot. I was in the field in the jungle area, and he began, he went and he picked me up and he was pulling me out of, of harm's way with the bullets flying, and while he was trying to save me, he got hit by a bullet and died immediately. And the others told me that he had saved other men before he was trying to save me. And sir, I wanted to say thank you. And I know this is not much, sir, and I'm not much of a painter, but he used to always talk about how you and he would collect these paintings and how he loved them. And so I remember taking the time to sketch 
and to paint a picture of your son. Now, boys and girls, this is not the son of the story. This is my son who's helping with the videos and his two dogs. Isn't that a cute picture there? It's not a drawn picture. It's a, it's a photo that's been decoupaged that they did in Pathfinders Club, which is a great club. You should join it if you have one around you. And they put that on there and they made this nice little frame. And so, but he had, had painted a picture of the man's son. And the man began to cry and he looked at the picture. He looked more closely. See Otong? Isn't that a nice? Yeah. And he looked at the picture and he could see that of course, it wasn't a masterpiece. I mean, he's used to looking at a Picasso or a Raphael or a Rembrandt, and this is, <laughs> you know, amateur. But no, no, the father's heart looked at that, and he saw that that young man had captured the eyes, that it, he could see in his face the, the personality. And the man said, oh, this is one of my, this is precious to me. Thank you so much for such an amazing picture. And he hugged the young man and, and he said, S may I pay you for this picture? This is a work of art. And the young man says, no, 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 sir. No, you can't pay me for this. Your son saved my life. I'm just glad that you like it. Thank you. And so he gave him the picture. And the man immediately took the picture and he went into his house. And there in his house with all these amazing paintings from around the world, millions of dollars worth of paintings in his house. This is an amazing palace of a house. And he put it up as high as, he put it right in the prominent place so that everyone could see. So I'm gonna put it right here next to Otong so that you can see it in the picture. And every time people would come into his house because they always would come to see the different paintings and to stare at the Picasso and to look at the Raphael and think, ah, I wonder what the genius was thinking, you know, and the, with the things that art people do. And they would go from room to room, but before they'd get to those rooms, he'd say, see, come and look at this amazing picture. This is my son. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, great. Where's the Raphael? Where's the Rembrandt? Ah, uh, where's the sleeping lady picture? Oh, and they'd just go right, right on by. Well, the man would still show people the pictures. Well, after a while, the man died. And the news got out that there was going to be an auction. An auction of all of the artwork that the man had collected, he and his son had collected through the years. It was all up for sale and his estate and all these things. And so it was announced, I mean, they even put it on Christie's and all these amazing auction places. They advertised that on a certain day at a certain time, that all potential buyers could come to, to, uh, to not bet, what's the name, uh, offer and to try to bargain and auction and to be able to put in their prices to be able to get these amazing paintings. And so the day came and there were people everywhere. There were people dressed up. There was probably some Saudi sheikhs. Uh, there was some probably some billionaires from California. Who knows who all came, but people who loved art. And they were there in this room, and there was a professional auctioneer. Have you ever seen an auctioneer? No. They don't have them too much in the jungle where you're from. <laughs> no. But an auctioneer would stand up there. Now, you have different types of auctioneers. You have the ones that are dealing with the fine art. I'm so glad you have come today. We will now be turning our attention to the Rembrandt. And they talk kind of like that, maybe. And they'd speak more slowly. Uh, do I have the first bid of $400,000 for the Rembrandt, you know, things like that. But there's other auctioneers who say, hey, can I get a, can I get a, can I get a, can I get a $10 bid, a $10 bid, okay, $10 going once, going twice, $10, $20, oh, I got a $30 over there, the lady in blue, okay, $50, $40, you know, maybe it's different, you know, it depends on what they're auctioneering off. Well, so all these people came, dressed up, they had, refreshments ready for people and they're all just waiting. They've got a booklet that describes all the different pictures that are coming and, and you can just hear the people sitting in the back, Otang, they're, they're looking through and they're saying, oh, I can't wait. I've, I've got, I'm planning to give all my money to try to get that one from Rembrandt. Or there's another person who says, oh, I want that Picasso. That would look so good in the front of my mansion there in Florida or whatever. And, and so they're all talking and hushing and all these things. And finally, it comes time for the time to start. And the auctioneer comes up and he hits the gavel. 
as we are about to begin this auction, thank you all for coming to honor the work of this man and the years of his collection. There are amazing pieces here. So may I have your attention as we begin this. And for the very first item, we have this beautiful, beautiful painting, uh, hand done in the jungles of Vietnam. A beautiful painting. And the people looked at it. He says, and the auctioneer said, do I have $50 for the painting? No one said anything. No hand went up. He said, uh, you can see the, the, the technique of the artist as he, he was trying to say something nice, but it really wasn't that nice of a picture. <laughs> it's nothing compared to all the others they had. And so the auctioneer is trying, he says, okay, do I have $20? Is anyone for $20 for the picture? This is our first picture of the offering of the day. $20, anyone? And the people aren't saying anything. They're not, they're just, in fact, at one point, someone in the back said, we don't want that picture. Get on to the good stuff. Go on to the masterpieces. <clears throat> the auctioneer said, I'm sorry. Is there even $10? $10. And the people just looked. Finally, there was a sound from the back of the room. An old man happened to come in. He was the gardener. He had been serving the man and his son for years, decades. In fact, he had seen the little boy growing up. And he had been serving and caring. And when he saw that they were offering a picture of the son, the young boy, the gardener said, I'll bid $10, sir. I'm not a rich man. That's all I have. But I'll bid it. And the auctioneer says, we have $10 over in the back corner. $10, $10. And is there anyone else going up to $20, $20? Anyone, anyone? Going once? Anyone, anyone? Going twice? Anyone? $20, $20? Three times it is sold to the gardener in the back corner. You may have this picture. And then there was a bunch of people said, ah, yes. And they were all, they were starting to get more focused. And they, they thought to themselves, now we're getting ready to go. And the auctioneer made arrangements. He gave a message to one of the persons, please, please take this over to the, to the gardener. Give him that picture. And so they did that. Got a picture of my son in the background too. But, and they took the picture to him. And then the auctioneer came back. And everyone else has moved up closer on their seats and they're getting ready and they've got their books and they're ready and they've got their little, their signs that are ready to say, I'm doing this one, I'm doing that one. And, and the auctioneer says, thank you all for coming. We're very grateful that you've chosen to come and to honor this man and his collection, but the auction is now finished. And the people are like, what? And you could hear them, <gasps> I mean, people, <gasps> Oh, you mean it's finished? All we had was a picture. And, and people began to say, what do you mean it's finished? And the auctioneer said, I need to tell you, I was informed before the auction, according to the will, the last will and testament of the man, is that whoever purchased the son, the picture of the son, whoever honored him, got everything else. And so, Mr. Gardner, this whole estate and all of the paintings now belong to you. And can you imagine? Can you imagine all the rich people that were there? Can you imagine the Saudi Sheikh going, <gasps> and, and, the, and the billionaires to realize, <gasps> $10, I could have gotten everything. <laughs> But what do you think that means, boys and girls? The man loved his art. He also loved his son. But he didn't want it just to go to people that wanted to think of it as stuff. He wanted it to go to someone who cared about him and about his son. And they would be fabulously wealthy, more than they could ever imagine. All the other people that just wanted parts to tear this one away, take that one away. But he wanted to give it to someone who would honor the son. You know, boys and girls, this story has been told over and over because it's an amazing lesson for all of us. 
the Bible teaches that God wants to give us incredible inheritance in, in the Messiah. That heaven is coming where there'll be no more sin, no more death. Other people call it paradise, the Garden of Eden, whatever it may be. After we are raised from the dead or when Jesus the Messiah returns to take us up there, the truth is what we do with the Messiah, God's one and only the Son, the Messiah, all those names that the Scripture uses, what we do with Him opens up the door for everything else. And so just like those amazing paintings went to the gardener who gave what he could for the one most important piece, when you and I choose to open our hearts to God's love and God's plan of salvation through the Messiah, which is another word for the Son of God, Messiah, when that happens, you get everything else. An inheritance, full and free. Life now, life eternal. What an incredible thing. And so that's why that story has been told over and over again, boys and girls. Whoever honors the Son. In fact, there's a verse in Psalms that says, Kiss the Son, lest He rebuke you, and you be found wanting in the way. So God wants to do beautiful things in your life. I pray that you will find what's most important. Keep watching these stories from Uncle Brian and Otong. We are happy to share them with you. They teach great lessons and values and point you to what truly matters in life. And I pray that you're abundantly blessed today. See you later. Bye-bye.